Hello, welcome back to my channel. So happy Valentine's Day to everybody. Hopefully you guys are having a fun and safe Valentine's Day. Um, no matter what y'all are doing, if y'all aren't doing anything, um, I'm not doing anything. I'm filming this video for you guys. Today's case is a disappearance case. And it is the disappearance of Asha Degree. Asha was born Asha Jaquila Degree on August 5th, 1990 in Shelby, North Carolina to parents Harold and Aquila Degree. She had an older brother who was named O'Brien. She played basketball at her school. She was a really good basketball player. She was on the basketball team. Um, it was something she really enjoyed. She seemed to be very competitive when it came to basketball. Asha's parents, both of them worked and because they both worked, they left Asha and her brother alone, kind of like latchkey kids. Um, and after school, they knew to go home and get themselves there, get themselves in. And Asha actually shared a room with her older brother, O'Brien. On Valentine's Day 2000, Asha had played a basketball game the night before with her team at school and they had lost and, and Asha seemed to be competitive and, and not very happy that the team lost. And she had become quite upset about the loss. Of course, any athlete would be upset about losing with your team. So the following day, Asha, who was only nine years old, she was in fourth grade at the time, uh, went missing from her home. Her father checked on her around 2.30 a.m. and mom checked on her around 6.30 in the morning. And by 6.30 in the morning, she was gone. So when her father had originally checked on her at 2.30 in the morning, she was still there. But sometime between her father checking in on her and her mother checking in on her at 6.30, Asha was gone. So the parents, understandably so, worried. They called 911. I mean, this is a nine-year-old little girl um, who's missing from her bed, who was there one second, wasn't there the next. So they called 911, they told them what happened, and there had been a couple of sightings. So some truck drivers stated that they saw Asha walking around the highway 180 near the intersection, which was near her house. And they said that they had saw her walking on like on the side of the highway. And I mean, I don't know y'all, but if I see a nine year old or like a small kid and it's four or five in the morning. I don't know exactly what time she left. It must have been between 2.30 a.m. when her father checked on her and, and before 6.30 in the morning when her mom checked on her. In between that time, so late night, very early morning. If I see a little kid walking around, like it's probably dark, you know, the sun hasn't come out, they're all alone. I don't know why, you know, you wouldn't try to stop and help them. It's, I don't know. And one driver said he turned around because it was raining and he saw a young little girl alone. But when he stopped to help her, Asha got spooked and ran away. Um, the truck driver said she had a backpack. Some witnesses also stated that they saw a girl get into a green car. Understandably so, if Asha's walking in the middle of the night alone and some random person like pulls over she might get scared and not know what's happening and, and run away from that person. Besides those sightings Asha was never seen again. So there are some theories on her disappearance and the most common one is that somebody took Asha. It is possible that somebody could have been grooming her potentially this whole time and convinced her to sneak out of her house and meet them somewhere in the middle of the night. Maybe it was that same person that was in the green car that witnesses had said that they saw a little girl walk going into that green car. It could have been the same person and maybe she knew the person in the green car and that's why she got in the car with them. They had planned to meet sometime that night. Another theory is that somebody took her against her will, that maybe she was mad because of the basketball game and she went out for a walk and when she was walking, somebody took her. And recently, an inmate named Marcus Mellon told news, 
he knew she was killed and he knew where her body was. Marcus Mellon has been convicted of sex crimes against children. The FBI said that they're questioning him. The FBI stated that they will continue to follow up on every lead and tip that they get in hopes of finding out what happened to Asha. Another theory is that she was murdered by a family member. Um, and this is very common when somebody gets murdered or somebody disappears, especially if it's a child, it's very easy to look at the family structure first and look at the parents, look at the wife, husband, boyfriend, whoever. Um, and so some people think that the dad and the brother had something to do with it. There were no computers at home, so Asha wasn't able to chat or get in contact with anybody really. She, she was limited on her options when she got home because there was no computer access. Some reasons these theories don't make sense is one, the police ended up clearing the family and that doesn't mean that they didn't do it, but I'm just saying the police cleared them. They helped look for her, which again, doesn't mean anything. Um, but we have all these witnesses and sightings saying that they saw her alive, that they saw her walking on the highway um, at some point in the late night early morning of that, that valentine's day in 2000. another most improbable theory i would say is that asha was sleepwalking this is more actually like an internet theory a reddit theory that asha was sleepwalking and left her house while she was sleepwalking and somebody took her or she succumbed to the elements or something happened to her along the way it was not proven that asha had any history of sleepwalking another thing that really doesn't make sense at least to me is that asha and her brother shared a room she had her backpack she had clothes she locked the door when she left and so I feel like if she was sleepwalking, I mean, I don't know. I'm not a neuropsychologist. I don't know about that much about sleepwalking. I don't know if when you sleepwalk, you're able to still completely function and, and have that mindset of let me lock the door, let me pack the things that I need because it's raining, because it's cold. And she had packed all her things in her backpack with some clothes, so... I don't know I just think the sleepwalking theory doesn't make sense at least to me I don't think that that is what happened it could have I mean I think with cases like this where we don't know what the outcome is anything could have happened but I just I really don't think that that is the theory that I would go with personally just because there is no history of Asha ever having sleepwalking the most realistic theory is that Asha ran away and there's many reasons why she could have ran away or she could have left um one was she did lose the basketball game the night before with her team and that does sound dramatic and it sounds like you know why would she run away just for that but she was also only nine years old she was competitive she probably was very upset and she was very upset that her team had lost and so maybe she decided to not run away but at least go for a walk or kind of let up some steam she also took her backpack locked the door her purse was gone and some clothes were gone um from her house so that seems more like she planned this she had packed things to go um as if she were going somewhere you know you don't just pack clothes for no reason like i don't go to work and take a whole bunch of clothes with me it, you know, she must have had a reason to pack all of these things. A couple of days later, they found a pencil, marker, and a Mickey Mouse hair bow. A year later, contractors found Asha's backpack that had her name on it and her number on it. And so this makes more sense with Asha potentially running away because she had packed her stuff and they found the Mickey Mouse hair scrunchie, the backpack that had her name on it. And so if she did pack her things, which it seems that she did, you know, it also makes 
the theory that it was her family that murdered her a little bit less likely. I don't know. They could have staged it, I guess, and made it look like she ran away. Um, I, I don't know. The backpack had been double wrapped in a black trash bag and buried 26 miles from her home. Also found next to a pair of men's khaki pants. And that, that's just really weird, okay? Like, somebody took the time to wrap her backpack so that somebody would be like, oh, here's just like this backpack. They wouldn't, you know, maybe they just throw it away because they don't know that there's a backpack in it. Or they would just look at it and be like, oh, here's this trash. Like, let's just leave it there or throw it away, not go through it. And to double wrap it, that that's planning. That's calculated. That's planning. And the male khaki pants, I mean, that could be potentially the person that took her or killed her. Maybe that person took their pants off because maybe she was assaulted and that person got spooked and, and left the pants there. I don't know. Maybe it's a coincidence that those khaki pants were just next to the backpack. I don't know, but I, I definitely think that all of her things being found, I think that her backpack being double wrapped in a trash bag, her Mickey Mouse hair bow, all the things that they found that belonged to Asha um, kind of lead to the theory that she either ran away or was taken. The bag itself was tested. Authorities never released the results. Um, some people think that she ran away and died due to the elements because it was cold, it was raining. Um, she was alone, you know, how much money could she have had with her? You know, how far could she have gone? Um, maybe she ran away and someone saw her and took her and just saw a vulnerable little girl alone in the middle of the night, early morning, and just decided to take her. That person could be a stranger. It could be the person in the green car. It could be that Asha ran away to meet that person in the green car because she potentially knew them and then that person ended up taking her. Maybe she didn't run away. Maybe she just did actually go for a walk because she was angry and she wanted to let off some steam. And again, she didn't have internet access at home. Maybe she just felt like the only thing she could do is just go, like get up, go, go for a walk. You know, I at times have felt like enclosed like when I'm really upset and I'm just like in my room and I'm like I don't want to be here let me just go for a walk so she could have done that and again somebody could have seen her and taken her she could have ran away for good maybe she had not so good of a home life maybe something was happening at home that caused her to run away but since that Valentine's Day in 2000 Asha degree has never been found no clues to what could have happened to her have been substantiated. We have that convicted felon, Marcus Mellon, who claimed that he knows where her body is. That may or may not be true. He could have been the person in the green car. Maybe Asha is still alive. Maybe, I don't know. I, I, I think that finding her backpack buried, double wrapped with a lot of her belongings, like the pencils, the markers, the Mickey Mouse hair tie. I think that it is possible that somebody did take her and harmed her, killed her, and maybe disposed of her body or something along those lines. I don't know. The FBI is still offering a reward and still looking into leads that may potentially help in finding out what happened to Asha. But guys, that is the disappearance of nine-year-old Asha Degree. I hope for her family that, you know, it's 21 years later. I hope that something comes up. I hope that we can find some evidence or something that leads to knowing what happened to Asha that night. Another thing I think is really weird that I just thought of and I think I have to mention it is like if her and her brother shared a room did her brother was 
her brother awake? Did he see her leave? Did he try to stop her from leaving? Maybe he's a deep sleeper and didn't even feel her leave. I don't know. I just thought that was something else that I should mention. Um, but it has been 21 years since Asha disappeared. Um, again, the FBI continues to offer a reward, continues to look into every lead that they get and hopefully we will find out what happened to Asha Degree. But guys, that's it for my video. Leave a like, subscribe if you like my channel. If you want to see me cover any case in the future, leave a comment down below, let me know. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your Valentine's Day and I'll see you next time. Bye.